Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the chief priests and the elders of the people, Hear another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, put a hedge around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a tower. Then he leased it to tenants and went on a journey. When vintage time drew near, he sent his servants to the tenants to obtain his produce. But the tenants seized the servants, and one they beat, another they killed, and a third they stoned. Again, he sent other servants, more numerous than the first ones, but they treated them in the same way. Finally, he sent his son to them, thinking, they will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to one another, this is the heir, come, let us kill him and acquire his inheritance. They seized him, threw him out of the vineyard, and killed him. What will the owner of the vineyard do to those tenants when he comes? They answered him, He will put those wretched men to a wretched death and lease his vineyard to other tenants who will give him the produce at the proper times. Jesus said to them, Did you never read in the scriptures, The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done and it is wonderful in our eyes. Therefore, I say to you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that will produce its fruit. The Gospel of the Lord. Good morning, sisters and brothers. For the last two Sundays, the gospel has been on the parable of the vineyard. And today again on this 27th Sunday of the church calendar is about the vineyard of the Lord. Both the first reading and the gospel are using this image of the vineyard. In the first reading, as you heard, Isaiah says that Israel, that the vineyard, the vineyard that the Lord loved so much, but it yielded only sour grapes. And because of this, Isaiah says the vineyard will be destroyed. And in this passage, the prophet is expressing God's disappointment in his people who had turned away. He had cared for them so much with the love, just as a good farmer cares for his vineyard. He had hoped Israel would respond favorably to him and also listen to his voice, but then they did not. <clears throat> Instead of bearing good fruits, the vineyard has produced wild and sour grapes. And because of this, God is pointing to the fact that Israel shall be invaded and humbled by his enemies. And he promised to render that vineyard kind of useless. And God says, I will take the hedge and give it to grazing. Yes, I will make it a ruin. It will overgrow with the thorns. I will command the clouds not to send rain upon it. Then in the gospel, in the parable, Jesus takes up the same image, though with the difference as we heard. He states that the tenants will be replaced and the vineyard instead will be kept. The parable story here is describing the tenants who are abusing the servants of the owner of the vineyard, as we had, seizing the servants, beating them, and killing them as well, and they eventually 
kill his only son that he sent to them to ask for this accountability. They had wanted to take over the vineyard, but instead, despite killing the servants and killing the son of man, they still lost it. The tenants failed to show respect to the owner and had hope, and they thought that by eliminating these master servants and then his son, they would take possession of this vineyard, but again, all in vain. At the end of it all, the master assures them of condemnation and concludes by saying, the kingdom of God will be taken away from them and given to the people that will produce its fruits. So the readings today, the first and the gospel especially, point to these four facts, namely, we are not the owners of the kingdom of heaven. We are only its stewards who have to give account to the real owner. And we are accountable to what has been entrusted to us. And secondly, that we must be productive with what and all that God has given us. The fruits that he talks of are the outward expressions of what lay deep down in our hearts and we are asked to be productive. In other words, to bear fruits, fruits of love, fruits of respect, fruits of mercy, forgiveness, justice, and all that. And thirdly, that God has given each one of us personal gifts and graces that he wants us to use to make discipleship as the 13th apostle that we prefer to name it in this uh, holy family. So, and fourthly, this very word of God that we hear in the first reading and the gospel is continuing to challenge us that we have to abandon our ways of living that do not respect human life and dignity and adhere to the voice of God, to listen to his voice and to be productive with what he has given us, be it in the family, at our workplace, in the community, or whatever environment we find ourselves in. And that is what stewardship is all about. And that is what we are called to, to make disciples of others by being fruitful with this call that God has given us. God has played this part by showing us this love. And he wants us to be productive in this vineyard. May we therefore become aware and pray for the blessings and the gifts and the graces of God that is in us and always continue to pray and to respond to his everlasting love for our God and for our own neighbor. And we ask all this in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.